you were talking about the changes in human diet and eating soft foods and how it affects the way the jaw develops and the, the size of the jaw and that there's a way to improve that, which I found fascinating. Yeah, and that this was something when you set out to write a book about breathing, the last thing you think you're going to be doing is handing you know around a bunch of ancient skulls and, and looking at teeth. But, but that's where this journey led me. I had heard from some biological anthropologists that our faces have changed and that our mouths have gotten too small. And that was one of the reasons so many of us were breathing so poorly. And so I thought, well, this sounds interesting. These people are legit. I want to check it out. And if you take an ancient skull, anything older than 500 years old, 5,000 years old, 50,000 years old, you're going to see by and large about 99% chance these skulls are going to have perfectly straight teeth. They never had their wisdom teeth removed. They never had braces, any orthodonture, anything. They had straight teeth because they had these very wide and large mouths and these powerful jaws. If you start getting into the modern era of industrialized food, mouths start shrinking. So why do we have crooked teeth? Not from genetics, it's because our mouths have grown so small that the teeth have nowhere to go. So they grow Whoa. crooked. And what else happens when you have a mouth that's too small for its teeth? You have a smaller airway. So this is one of the reasons why so many people have snoring, sleep apnea, and other respiratory problems. This sounded so bizarre, because it's nothing I'd ever learned in school, but all anyone needs to do is look up some ancient skulls if you're online and check out their teeth and check out how they have these huge jaws, these big, flat, wide faces, powerful faces, and they all had this. And then you go into the wild, 5,400 different mammals, and check out and see how many have crooked teeth. The answer is zero. <laughs> so some, some bulldogs do because they've been bred to have right. this flat face just like humans. Yeah. But, but animals in the wild have straight teeth. And, and we did too. As a species, we, we have straight teeth. But, um, but because of industrialization, specifically because of food, our mouths have grown too small. You would never believe that. Like if someone told me that other than reading your book and, and kind of understanding where you're, where you're coming from, I would think this is nonsense. It's genetics. Yeah. Just like when, why people have small hands or people have big feet or whatever. Well, it's become a heritable trait. So, so what's happened now is they've found the researchers who've, who've, who've done this. Robert Corcini worked on this stuff for 30 years. There's 250 scientific papers on it. They found within the first generation of switching to industrialized foods, about 50% of the population is going to have malocclusion, which means a crooked jaw, crooked teeth. After that, about 60 to 70% next generation. After that, about 80%. After that, look around. That's us now, about 90%. There, uh, Dr. Kevin Boyd is now doing studies where he's looking at fetuses in the womb and is seeing their mouth size is too small and they have this backward slant to their faces just like I have, just like so many people in the population have. If you were to measure a skull and you were to draw one line from its ear to its nose and another line perpendicular to that, almost every single ancient skull would be above that line, very powerful jaw. Now, 90% of modern skulls are below it. So they are behind it. So, and this is happening now, it is becoming a heritable trait. So, so kids are, are messed up to, to begin with, which is why so many kids are, have sleep apnea and snore now, which is so injurious to their, to their health. The vegan diet is not optimal for human health because it lacks so many of the nutrients that are found in animal foods. Creatine, carnitine, choline, answering taurine, vitamin K2, B12, riboflavin. You need these nutrients to thrive as a human. We've been eating animals throughout our history. I believe animals and eating them was one of the key events that allowed us to become human. We see this incredible increase in brain growth size about 2 million years ago when we started hunting more. It's a correlation, but it's quite compelling. So I think the vegan diet is not optimal for most humans because it is both deficient in the key nutrients that allow us to thrive and it results in a large load 
load of toxins. So you're concentrating the toxins and you're getting the least nutrient-rich foods. Imagine the amazement of the dentist from Cleveland, Ohio. He starts looking at in the mouths of all the children and then the adults. And he had to look in three mouths before he found even one tooth that had evidence of decay. So less than 1% tooth decay in the Swiss village. They didn't have any dentists. So this was just natural protection against tooth decay. But the other thing that really surprised him was that everybody had naturally straight teeth. There were no dental deformities. They had very broad faces, especially in what he called the middle third of the face between the eyes and the mouth. Uh, high cheekbones, which we consider the mark of attractiveness. So everyone had naturally straight teeth. Uh, they were very sturdy and strong and tall. Uh, the tall people, you can see the children on the right, um, So this photograph perfectly il illustrates the difference between normal facial development on the right and what I would call modern facial development on the left. Uh, these uh, young people are obviously very similar genetics from the same tribe. But what you're seeing on the right is very strong facial bones. So the face can be wide and all those little bones in the face and the skull are broad. Okay. On the left you've got uh, less robust, less strong facial development. Let's just say that you had a blueprint to build a house and your house was gonna have a nice wide front door. And when it came time to build your house, uh, you just bought the cheapest materials or you couldn't find good materials. And to build a house that would still stand up, you would need to make your door narrow because if you built a wide door, your house would collapse. So this is, a, this is a, an adjustment that your body makes when the bu building materials are not optimal, it builds more narrow. And that's exactly what we're seeing there. Uh, the children who were born to the parents who had changed their diets, they had more narrow faces and they had crowded and crooked teeth. So in just one generation, the dental deformities appeared. It, this, this is not a genetic thing. This is a, a nutritional um, problem. Then for women when they were pregnant and breastfeeding and for children when they were growing. They recognized that when a child is being formed and growing, that's when you need the maximum nutrition. And once you get to adulthood, you can improve your health with your diet, but you cannot change your form. Your, your house has already been built, okay? Your temple is already built. So the maximum nutrition is really important for conception, preconception, and growth. And this is a big emphasis of the Weston A. Price Foundation. And these practices, which he found all over the world, put modern man to shame. Because we don't uh, teach this. This is what we should be teaching our children in school. This is what every teenage girl should be hearing. Uh, to have a healthy baby, that depends on how you eat now. And most of our teenage girls, I think it's really cool to be vegetarians, and they eat a lot of sugar. and. Um, if this is not a disaster in the making, this is a disaster that's already here. Now here are the poster mice, the poster children of epigenetics. These are two 
agouti mice, a picture taken by my great collaborator Rob Waterland from Houston. And he was famous for demonstrating that a mother's diet at the time of conception can change whether a mouse looks small and brown or large and golden. These mice are identical sisters. They're born in the same litter. But look how different they are. One of them, small, brown, lean and healthy. The other, beautifully golden, but massively obese and hence develops diabetes and dies much younger. The same genotype, but a different expression. And that expression is determined by what the mother eats at the time of conception. So, that was great. We understand that occurs in mice, but does it occur in humans? In pregnancy, when we conceive a baby, we also start growing an organ. And this organ is intended to be with this baby throughout the whole plus or minus 40 weeks. And this is what feeds the baby. This is what nourishes the baby. This is the baby's home. And we, with growing this organ, have to look at what we're putting into our bodies. Today, we had the opportunity for me to look at two placentas side by side, one being a vegetarian placenta and the other one being a mom that was very nutrient dense with the foods that she was eating with an animal-based diet. I cannot believe the difference in the quality of the placenta and not just the quality of the placenta, but in turn the nutrition of what the baby was growing in and what the baby received throughout the whole pregnancy. This one right here was from a mom that was primarily vegetarian throughout her pregnancy. Um, towards the end of her pregnancy, I was able to get her on liver pills just because her iron had dropped so significantly. Um, and this is the placenta of a mom who was animal-based throughout her pregnancy. So she had lots of red meat, lots of pasteurized eggs, lots of raw milk. Um, and the difference between the two, I mean, it's just obvious. There is is such a huge substantial difference in the quality and the consistency of these placentas. Over here, this is called calcification. It, if you feel it, it's hard. Um, there's a little bit of like a sand-like, rock-like consistency, and this is throughout the whole entire placenta. This is not what we would want to see in pregnancy. In my almost 19 years of doing births, I've never had a side-by-side -side comparison, and it's just, it's mind blowing to me. It's 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 really sad that this is the the start of a baby's life. Um, this is the start of their nutrition. Um, this is what fed them. This is what housed them. And they, you know, it's it's mind blowing to see the comparison. I've had midwives and doulas tell me that when they see the placenta, which is attached to the umbilical cord of vegans, they look a lot like a smoker's placenta. And we know that the health of these critical connections, this tether between baby and mother, are intimately tied to the amount of animal products in the diet. We see it over and over illustrated. If we have somebody that's eating animal-based, we had somebody that's eating grass-fed, grass-finished meats on a regular basis, if we have somebody that's eating pasteurized eggs and raw dairy, then what we're going to see is all of these vitamins, this retinol, this copper, that's all being pushed through the placenta and helping this baby sustain life. God gave us the blueprint. It's a perfect blueprint. But it's our responsibility to build the house according to the blueprint. And our children, our babies and children are depending on us to have this knowledge. And the blueprint of every person on this planet, we're all children of God, we all have the same blueprint, and that is to have a wide, attractive face and naturally straight teeth. That is the blueprint.